Well, we're very excited to welcome to the show former UPenn donor David Magerman. He's co-founder and managing partner at Differential Ventures. He's a brilliant mind behind Renaissance Technologies, widely, widely recognized as the world's most successful quant hedge fund. It's good to see you, David. Um, what's your reaction to these three dozen colleges and universities where you see pro-Hamas, pro-Palestine, anti-Semitism marches? What bothers you the most about this? Um, you know, I'm not surprised. Um, this has been something that's been developing really over the last few decades, uh, growing on college campuses. Um, and I think the last few years have permission people to say more what's on their mind, and that's bringing out a lot of opinions, including this uh, kind of outward anti-Semitism that's becoming epidemic on campuses. David, are you cutting ties to UPenn? Um, yes, I am. How much did you donate to them? Um, I probably donated between like seven and eight million dollars so far. Okay, so that's going to be a hit to them and their endowment. They sit along with uh, Harvard University, they have very large endowments they're sitting on while they're gouging American families with t constant tuition hikes. So that's been the complaint. Let's also get your reaction to HBO's Bill Maher this weekend on the pandemic of ignorance in U.S. universities among academics and students. Let's get your take on this. Watch. As an Ivy League graduate who knows the value of a liberal education, I have one piece of advice for the youth of America. Don't go to college, because as recent events have shown, it just makes you stupid. There are few, if any, positives to come out of what happened in Israel, but one of them is opening America's eyes to how higher education has become indoctrination. The same students who will tell you that words are violence and silence is violence were very supportive when Hamas terrorists went on a rape and murder rampage worthy of the Vikings. They knew where to point the fingers at the murdered, and then it was off to ethics class. 34 student groups at Harvard signed a letter that said the apartheid regime is the only one to blame, proving they don't know what constitutes apartheid. If ignorance is, is, is a disease, Harvard Yard is the Wuhan wet market. Harvard is a Wuhan wet market of ignorance. When you heard that, what do you, what's your reaction? Uh, my ac reaction is that it's um, a little naive. Um, I mean, students are going to college uh, for their employment po uh, prospects. Um, they're looking to make an investment in their future. The problem is that the places that are the most likely ticket to a good outcome in terms of job prospects are the places where this kind of um, indoctrination is happening. And I think that donors, um, I mean, I'm a small time donor compared to the biggest donors at these schools. The mega donors are bigger than I am. And frankly, me leaving is not going to make as much of a difference as some of these billionaires who are pulling away. But if the, the major donors of these uh, universities would shift their focus to colleges that had values that they agreed with, that we're not going to be indoctrinating children with these kind of ideas, but instead we're going to be educating them to become leaders in America and around the world, um, I think that those universities could become the Harvards of the future. Interesting. Um, so I think we just have to think about changing our donation patterns from being retrospective to the places so we went to school and donating to places that are representing our values today. Was UPenn upset with you when you cut off, cut it off? Are they mad? To be honest, they haven't responded to me at all. Okay. So this story, we're kind of hearing reports. You know, we don't. We we know that you you're very very smart and you you're very in touch with what's going on in, in the world and U.S. society. George Soros's foundation is laying off 40 percent of its staff closing its Baltimore office, closing offices in Spain and half a dozen offices in Africa. It has been setting the left-wing political agenda here and around the world. It's got a massive 25 billion in assets. It's been a powerhouse for years, but it looks like it might be in trouble. We don't know. Uh, it, sent, it sent grantees a note saying it will largely terminate funding within the EU and further funding will be extremely limited. We know that George Soros's son took it over. There's a sea change happening right now at universities in businesses where they see anti-Semitism and, and also what's happening with George Soros's foundation. Can you wrap this all together? What do you see? I think that a bigger influence in colleges is coming from what they call undocumented donations. You know, the donations where you name a building, where you make a gift agreement, um, you join the board of trustees, those are documented gifts. But there are 10 to $15 billion worth of undocumented uh, gifts being made to universities in America. And the question is, what are those those undocumented gifts buying? 
Um, they're not coming from the Soros Foundation. Uh, they're coming from other sources. And if you see the impact that it's having on college environments, the question is, where is it coming from? And why are the universities accepting undocumented money? Wow. That's why a wouldn't they just take only my money that's uh, from, from recognized donors. That's a big story. 15 billion in undocumented donations going into U.S. universities. Don't know where they're coming from. Ways and Means Chair Jason Smith said he's talking about taxing college endowments. We're going to stay on that story. David Magerman, thanks for joining us tonight. It's good to see you.